I'm going to show you how this little cube can save your next shoot. And I'm not clowning around. Get the point? Hi, this is J.P. Morgan. And I'm Kaylee Lohman. Today on The Silent Lens, we're going to take you out with the spider cube and show you why it's important and so useful to put a spider cube in the first frame or two of your setups, and it gives you a place to color balance to and to give you the right density for each one of your shots. It's an easy thing to do, first two frames, and we'll show you how in different lighting situations it can become extremely valuable to get the right color balance and the right density in your image. So let me explain what the spider cube does. It's like a gray cart, only way better. It's got, up here, absolute white, because that chrome ball picks up whatever light's in the area and it's gonna give you complete white. Then it's got a white in like a 98% range. It's got a gray card. The highlight side, or your key side, is going to give you an 18% gray on your gray card. Then it's got like a 3% black on the bottom. And last of all, this little hole in here is a trap, so it's always absolute black, complete black, no light whatsoever. So when you're out shooting, you shoot your first two frames with this in the frame. Now, when you go into camera raw, you use those to be able to balance either through the black or through the white or through the gray. It gives you three different options to get the color balance and the exposure that you really want for the image you're shooting. It helps you in mixed light situations. It's going to help you in direct sun. It's just going to be a great device to be able to help you get the exact exposure and the color balance that you want. So we're going to shoot some shots of Katie here in different situations and just see what we got. Okay, so we've been out shooting our creepy clown, and now it's time to come in and to look at our spider cube and how it will help us to, in raw, kind of process all these images. But the first one is outside in direct sun. And this is probably the easiest to see because we've got our spider cube right there. It's in direct sun on our face. There's really, I mean, this is kind of a full gamut of uh, everything, color, exposure. I shot all these on auto white balance. just decided to kind of let the white balance do what it wanted to do. The reality is it wouldn't matter how I shot these. If I shot these as this, uh, it wouldn't matter. All totally blue. I mean, it wouldn't, it really in raw doesn't make any difference where I set this color balance on the camera. In the end, um, it's gonna all get corrected and because we have all the information in the raw. So there's as we shot it there, camera settings. The very first thing is on our spider cube here, we're going to take the little eyedropper at the top, which is for white balance. We're gonna set this white balance on the bright side or the highlight side of the uh, gray on the cube because that becomes our key light side. We don't wanna set it on this side because on the shadow side, because it's gonna be a little too dark, but the highlight side is gonna be our key side. So when I click on there, it automatically cleans the color up and brings us to a clean color. Now, this is always a starting point. If you don't like the color, you can push it around from here entirely, but this gives us clean whites and a clean image. And from there, you can decide if you want to warm it or cool it or whatever you want to do with it. So next, I'm going to go to exposure. I'm gonna activate the warning uh, on the top, both for shadow on the left and for highlight on the right. So if I get too bright or too dark, it's going to start to give me the warning. So if we go up like this, we see the blue comes up, we go like that, you get the red. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna open this up. And looking at my gray, I just want that to be a nice 18% gray. I mean, I, I don't wanna be up in here, obviously. I want to be able to just give myself a nice 80% gray. I'm not gonna push this exposure up very much because we're shooting in direct sunlight. I really don't need to open the exposure up. So in this, in this case, it's not gonna do very much. I'm gonna drop down here to my blacks now. And the nice thing about the spider cube is that on the spider cube, you got a small black hole there. Now, if you set this so that that small black hole, and especially when you have the warning light, the blue starts to come up. So just give yourself a little bit of blue there so it starts to separate, or if you turn this off, a lot of times if I don't have that on, I'll just look at it and go, well, where is it that I start to see just a little bit of that hole there? So I'm just seeing a little bit of separation on it. So that sets the blacks pretty deep. You may want to decide whether or not you want that. Now you can certainly come back up here in the shadows and the mid-tones, and I could open up the shadows just a little bit. Uh, and that will help me to recover anything that I lost when I set my blacks that deep. and kind of open those uh, blacks back up. Now I'll just, for fun on here, for clarity, because we got this direct sun on her face, I mean, a lot of times I like to bring the clarity up. I'm gonna bring the clarity down just a little bit and it will smooth the makeup out on her face just a little bit. 
So I'm just going to push it back to about 13. And that becomes my setting for this exposure. My exposure might be a little bright. I'm going to come down just a little bit with that exposure. And now I'm going to certainly go up here and save settings. Now, if I want to just simply, if I'm going to open that image, I can take all of these images from that sunshine, open these all up. I can apply that preset from my clown. So I click on here and I now select all and then I synchronize the settings. It's going to have that clown is going to synchronize with every single one of these and I can open them up. So if you're like shooting a wedding and you've got like 50 to 100 images that are kind of shot in the same lighting situation, put that spider cube in the first shot, get on the computer, you can balance the first one either in Lightroom or in Bridge, through Bridge and the Camera Raw, and you can then, um, you can take that first image and just process the entire group and it makes your workflow go a lot faster. Our next one is Open Shade. You know, in Open Shade, things can get a little tricky because the cube and the gray card are seeing what you think are highlight and shadow sides. But the reality is they don't necessarily relate to the face you're looking at. So right now my spider cube is on the right side. I've got it over there. It's got a highlight on it. It looks like the bright side of the cube right here is the key light, but it isn't. She's in the shade. That's the light that's on the hair. The light that's on her face is on this side. So if we put this here, it's going to warm this up a lot. And that's going to be a lot better. If I come to this side, it's going to make this look really blue because that's reflecting that setting sun that's out there and not the light that's in this little pool area where she's at. So if I bring it to this side, this side is reflecting the light that is in this little pool of area in the shade. That's a little too warm, so I'm gonna bring it back to about 6400, and that gives me a nice rendition right now. Mike's right there. My exposure now, I can open it up just a little bit. Um, my blacks, I can certainly, this would put me down to about right there, which I don't think is a bad place to be because I can go into my shadows here and I can open those shadows up a little bit and it just still gives me nice deep blacks but gives me a nice look in her face and everything looks fabulous there so let's take this off and that's just a nice rendition of her face in this open shade and doesn't have that kind of mushy color that you get a lot of times in shade so it looks fabulous so just remember you've got to look at that spider cube and not let it fool you because right now the way I set it up there wasn't done correctly. I should have set it over here in the shade on the shade side. And if I'd done that, it would have rendered exactly what we were seeing. But I stuck it out front here where it was getting a highlight reflection off from the sun and it wasn't set and nestled into that shade the way it should have been. Okay, so going on to our next one here. This is where it gets very interesting for me because once you go inside, you now got mixed color all over the place in here. I mean, it's just, you've got, I think there's some tungsten in this room. I think there's some kind of wannabe uh, daylight bulbs in here as well. So there's just a real mix of light in here. So we'll go through the same process. We're gonna take our eyedropper, we're gonna to go to, the shot, to what we think is the highlight side. You know, the reality is, it's probably more this right side because that light's coming from overhead. So I'm gonna click on that and clean the color up there make just a little bit of an adjustment there. Actually, that color's not bad. Uh, now with the exposure, I can push my exposure up and open things up. And I'll set my blacks a little deep there. With the, so you can see if I'm clipping, and we start to get our blacks in there, which looks very nice. And now I'm gonna open my shadows up and open the image up a little bit, but it'll hold my blacks. So let's take those off and see what we've got. I think that's nice. I want her to be in the shade. I don't want to, I mean, I could push the shadows up to here, but then at that point we just start to become so flat it's not worth looking at. So I'm gonna keep her in the shade. I'm gonna let it be a little bit dark down in there. We're looking into that open shadow uh, from the light that's overhead. So that's a great, that's fabulous there. So let's save our settings. Now I can apply those to all the other images that we, uh, we shot in this little living room situation here, which all right, apply preset, living room, a little too bright. I would bring it back because she's looking up into the, into, the, into the sky there. That looks nice. But now for this one, if I apply that same preset, this one's going to be a little closer because she's looking down just like the one that we, the sample that we worked off from. But either way, the cube gives us a starting point that gets us uh, where we want to be. Then we can make some fine adjustments if we need to, but should work for most of the images all the way across. You know, it's fabulous. This helped me get all these images. I could process all these images in an hour, whereas if I had to go through them all individually, it'd take me absolutely forever. Or just to figure out the color on one sometimes can take you 20, 30 minutes. You know, this gets you there really close, really quick, sometimes spot on, but usually very, very close. A few adjustments and you're ready to rock and roll. So now that we're done using our spider cube and we've got great images, 
I'm gonna go off and hang this on my Christmas tree. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. Our Mastering Studio Strobes download was put together to help you overcome the fears that people have getting into the world of strobes. It's gonna answer the question of what strobe should I buy? What's best for me? It'll help you understand how to sync them. It'll help you understand what modifiers you should purchase. It's going to help you understand all the questions you need to know to move comfortably into the world of strobes. So go to thatslinelens.com where you can download it today. Make sure you subscribe to Slime Lens. This is a very serious operation. No bozos here. We don't clown around. We bring you the best content possible. We slice things right down to the very minimum of the information you need. So subscribe to Slime Lens.